thinking of our conversation, Sharon, I think maybe uh, we'll change that to after the next song that we sing, rather than the other one. I think that's going to put you down too far in the... Psalm 95, verses 1 to 3. Would somebody like to volunteer to read that for me? Quick, okay, Carol, would you stand up, please, and uh, just to turn so that other people can hear you? Okay, thank you. Let us sing. You say, maybe I can't sing. I couldn't carry a tune in a dump truck. Well, that's okay. Because next thing he says is, let us make a joyful noise. So if that's all you can do is make a joyful noise, and you make a joyful noise, you croak it out, whatever it is that you can do, and to God it becomes beautiful music. We don't have to consider and think of ourselves as to how poorly we can sing as long as we're joyful in what it is that whatever we can do. And so don't ever keep your mouth shut when it comes time to sing because you think, I can't sing a tune and I don't want to throw anybody else out. No, you make your joyful noise anyway. And don't worry about what other people think because God's going to enjoy it as long as it's coming from a joyful heart. So, let's sing number eight. And we're going to change the words on here. It's a praise to the Lord the Almighty. And we're going to change there, if you're looking in the hymn book, it's changing praise to thanks. Thanks to the Lord. And I guess I ought to get my hymn book up because I don't have it memorized. Number eight. to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Thanks to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now
Psalm 147, verses 1 through 7. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord does build up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the broken in heart, binds up their wounds. Some of you have had some hard times this year. Broken hearts over the loss of loved ones and other situations. God heals broken hearts. If we but turn to him, praise him. He tells the number of the stars. He calls them all by names. That just amazes me that billions and maybe trillions of stars out there that God knows them all and they all have a name. Isn't that amazing? Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. You want somebody that understands? You don't feel that people around you understand you and they under don't understand your problem? God's understanding is infinite. Talk to him when people don't understand you. The Lord lifts up the meek, those who trust in him. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Sing praise. All the things that God does, healing broken hearts, knowing all the power that he has. And so I want us to sing here number 560, For the Beauty of the Earth. This speaks of the, the things that God has done in the creation and the, 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 this passage of scripture just referred to. Oh, 
psalmist says in Psalm 97 and verse 12, Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. I want us to take a few moments here and think about what God says we are to give thanks for. And here is one of them. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Remember in Isaiah, we're not going to read that passage, but in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah is talking about a time in the year that King Uzziah died, and he had a vision of God. And he saw God on his throne, high and lifted up. And there were seraphim, these angels that were around the throne, and they're described even more fully in the book of Revelation. And these seraphim are around the throne, and they're declaring, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And it says there that the post of the temple moved at the voice, powerful voice, declaring God's holiness. They weren't saying love, love, or grace, grace, or mercy, mercy. No, they were saying holy, holy, holy. I believe that the preeminent attribute of God is his holiness. And that all those other attributes that we think of as his moral attributes are all coming out of the fact of his holiness. And we can thank God that he is a holy God. And Isaiah's reaction to what he was seeing, it just broke him and he said woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts remember God wants somebody to go for him and Isaiah says I'll go and God cleansed his lips and enabled him to be able to preach for him when we remember God's holiness and we see ourselves in the light of his holiness and we see our failure, we need to thank him that he is holy, that he is without sin, he is without failure. And so I'd like someone this morning to volunteer to pray and just give thanks this morning for God's holiness. Somebody be willing to do that? I'm going to ask for somebody else here in a few moments to pray again. But will somebody pray giving thanks this morning for God's holiness? Greg? Psalm 136, verses 1 to 3. Somebody volunteer to read those verses for me, please. Lori. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. Thank you. Give thanks for his mercy endures forever. God's mercy it's defined for us in Psalm 103, verses 10 and 11, which say, He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as a heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. 
We can summarize God's mercy in that God does not give us what we deserve. Grace, he gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy, he doesn't give us what we do deserve. And we should certainly give thanks to God for his mercy. There's a wonderful passage declaring God's mercy in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Someone read those two verses for me, please. Phyllis. Seek the Lord Thank you. Do you ever feel after you have done something that is really dumb, really stupid, and you think you just beat yourself up and then how could I be so dumb and how could I be so stupid and you, you just can't get over and yet here I unfortunately I think that way quite often that's a weakness of mine and I really struggle with that but notice here let the wicked forsake his way the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord that's the time when we feel like that that we need to turn to the Lord and seek him his mercy we might think Lord how could you ever allow me to be so stupid how would you ever use me in any way when we get down in those times and yet the promise here is if we turn to him he will have mercy upon us and he will abundantly pardon us just like okay Gary it's all right don't worry about it no, it's, don't worry about it, Gary. I have pardoned you. You are abundantly pardoned. And what we have in Christ is a wonderful, glorious truth here. And it's such a beautiful passage of Scripture to seek God when we have those times when we feel so down about the things that we have done. So I'd like to someone else now to please, someone different, please thank God for his mercy. Bob? Father, I thank you for the mercy which you promised to us over and over again in the scripture. I thank you that we can return to you after we fall on you are abundant in pardoning us and quick to receive us. I pray that I would never forget the, the, the promise that we can return and help me never to take that blessing that's out uh, by acting rashly, but to, by your holiness and by your goodness and because of your mercy, seek to live right in front of you. I thank you for your mercy, which was shown to us most abundantly in Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that sacrifice that he made for my sin. Yeah, thank you. We've looked at these verses just recently, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these this morning. But God says we're, in 1 Thessalonians 5, or verse 18, we're to give thanks in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's God's will that we give thanks then the verse that we talked about also in Ephesians 5.20, that we're to giving thanks always for all things. That's the hard one, isn't it? We're willing to say thank you, Lord, in something, but to give them thanks for the th circumstance, that's another problem. That's a difficult one. And here indicates an enumeration or a selection it's the things that we're to give thanks for. It's not every blessing that God says we are to give thanks for. Yes, we're to give thanks for them, but not just the blessings. We're to give thanks for all things. Blessings are the difficult things. God has a blessing buried in there somewhere. 
We may not always see it, but it's there. And he says we're to give thanks for all things, all things. And we ought not to avoid that verse like there are many people that do. They talk about the verse in Thessalonians and ignore the one in Ephesians. I got this story about as a quote by a Dr. Clarence McCartney, and it comes out of his autobiography, and he's telling a story of two men who are passing through a field out in the country, and they're out there, and all of a sudden they don't realize it, but there's a bull out there, and the bull decides that he doesn't want them in his field. So all of a sudden they realize that this bull is charging in them, and so they're running across the field, and one of them realizing that the bull is catching up, and he says to John, John, you got to pray! Pray! And then John says, I never prayed in public in my life before. John, it doesn't matter. you got to pray something. And so John says, well, okay, I'll pray what my father used to pray at the table. Lord, for what we're about to receive, help us to be thankful. <laughs> It's not always easy, the circumstances that we have in our life, and it's not always easy to be thankful for those things. And so John wasn't too far off and praying, Lord, help me to be thankful. We may need, remember, we talked in a while back about Romans 8, verse 13, and we need to pray, putting to death the deeds of the flesh and ask the Holy Spirit to help us. And there may be a time when you're just are struggling with your circumstances and struggling with, with being thankful, and we can ask God to help us to be thankful. But when we do that, we do this as a thanksgiving, as a sacrifice to God. Psalm 69, verses 30 and 31 the psalmist says, I will praise the name of the Lord with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. To magnify God with thanksgiving is to thank God in the midst of difficult times and letting people around you hear your thanksgiving to God. And when you thank God and they know that you're going through a difficult time and you're thanking God for what's happening, you are pointing a light and you're shining it at God and showing that God is great even in the middle of my circumstances. And I'm going to thank him for it. And by doing so, you magnify him to them so that they can see the greatness of God. The psalmist goes on in verse 31 and says, This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that has horns and hoofs. For us to give thanks to him and magnifying him in the middle of our struggles and our difficulties is more meaningful to him than somebody coming to him with an offering of sacrifice. And they offer that sacrifice, but they've got a heart of stone while they're doing it. So the psalmist says in 100, Psalm 116 and verse 17, he says, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. A sacrifice is something that costs you something. Remember when David had gone and numbered the people and God goes and he judges Israel and David repents and he goes and he offers to God an offering and The man's name right now escapes me, but he, I just was reading about it. I didn't have it in my notes. It just came to me now. But he goes and he wants to, um, David going to, wants his property and his, everything that he has there, his implements that he's harvesting with. And he says, no, you can, you can have them. I'll, I'll just give them to you. And David says, no, 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 no. I can't offer to God something that doesn't cost me something. 
And so he pays him 600 shekels of gold for his property and all the accoutrements that are there, the animals that are helping with the grinding of the wheat and so forth and the wheat that he has because it had to cost him something to make a sacrifice to God. And when we go and we thank God in the difficult times, we're offering a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Hebrews 13, verses 12 and 15, by him, 12 is just helping us to understand that it's by him, Jesus, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Last year, our son Michael and his wife suffered a miscarriage. We had had two miscarriages already, and we were looking forward to our son Michael, fourth son, and his wife. They were still expecting, and we were still looking forward to having that one. And then on October 19th, Christy was just 12 weeks along, and we lost that one too. And my son Michael sent this out, with personal thoughts and feelings following the loss of our little baby pumpkin. They had wanted so desperately to have a little girl. And this was their little girl, Abby Amara. And Michael wrote this. He said, Lord, as my heart hurts, I turn to you to ease the pain and grant healing. As my tears flow, I cry to you to provide comfort. When my mind seeks answers, I will seek them from you. If I am left with a why, I will trust that you know best. I will thank you in the hard times. I will seek your hand to hold through the dark valley. I will rely on your peace through my turmoil. May there be found no complaint in my soul, just gratitude for the opportunity to love a life, for the privilege of turning a precious soul over to your care, for learning the hurt others experience, and for the blessing of feeling the love from those who care. Lord, thank you for always being there, for showing me that experiencing pain Catch this, is not a sign of your absence, but the realization that you are closer than ever before. <sighs> Praise the Lord. God is there in our times of struggle. And I'm sure that there are things that you have struggled with, but what are some things that you have struggled with in this past year? Just very briefly share some thoughts that you have struggled with in this past year, but maybe it's, you struggled with giving thanks, but now you can give thanks for because now you can see perhaps some of the purposes that God had in that difficult time that you had. Is there anyone that would like to share something along that line? Bob?
give to us abundantly above all we ask or think. That's what we've seen in the, the hearts of Caleb and Nisi. Not only have they returned to communicating with us and wanting to spend time with us, but they are they are actively involved in the church and interested in serving the Lord and getting their children involved. It's exciting to see that turn around. Hey. Yeah, well, it's something that you, that's something that they certainly struggled with giving thanks for in those years in the past. And anything else of this year that you struggled with? That you can, you can struggle maybe with giving thanks? Lori? Now we will sing, we bring the sacrifice of praise on your chorus sheet. The one on the left side this time, and this is the appropriate place to sing it. Now those of you that know it, I think that now that we're going back to how many knew this one, there's four. So those of you that know it, you can sing it with me through once and then we will sing it together just through one time. And we're, you'll notice at the bottom there, it offers to do a repeat. We're not going to do the repeat. We're just going to end under the number one. Okay? It goes like this. says that he learned thankfulness from a woman who helped care for him when he was a little boy. She told him, looking for good things is a kind of game an old preacher taught me to play. Take this morning. I woke up and thought, what's there to praise God for today? You know what? I couldn't think of a thing. Then from the kitchen came the most delicious odor that ever tickled my nose. Coffee! <laughs> much obliged, Lord, for the coffee, I said, and much obliged, too, for the smell of it. 
Many years later, Arslor stood at the bedside of that same woman as she lay dying. And seeing her in such pain, he wondered if she could still find something to be grateful for. Just then, she opened her eyes, looked at the others gathered around her bedside, and quietly said with a smile, Much obliged, Lord, for such fine friends. He says, I can't think of a better time than today to begin looking for things to be grateful for. It won't matter what words you use, whether you say, thank you, Father, or much obliged, Lord. The important thing is that you say it. Someone else said, if you can't think of anything to be thankful for, you have a bad memory. David said in Psalms, or 2 Samuel rather, 22 and verse 50, at the end of his life, he says, Therefore I will give thanks unto you, O Lord, among the heathen. I will sing praises unto your name. We need to be giving thanks. So I talked about difficulties to thank God for. What are some blessings that you thank God for from this year? Ask God to help with thanks for the thing that you're struggling with, too. Well, we've just had a recent blessing. Um, for years, I have felt that we needed to do something to get my mother-in-law to where we could care for her. She has kind of a strained relationship with her son, and so I didn't see him stepping in there, uh, unfortunately, and so I felt that we needed to do something to get her closer, or we got closer to her somehow. I had a hard time seeing us moving to California because the houses and so forth in the California I just didn't see us being able to afford to live there, although sometimes I wonder how we afford to live here. <laughs> but the Lord, uh, and we've, we've talked about it between us over the years, and I've said that, and Mom has said different times she didn't want to come to Maine because it's too cold. And so I kind of figured we're going to have to do something to move closer to her somehow. And when her sister died, when, after we moved her to Texas to live with her sister a year ago this past July, I decided that 
probably the thing that we would have to do is we'd have to move down there temporarily and maybe live down there for a while until she passed. And after her sister died, she declared that she wanted to come be closer to her daughter. And uh, so it's just uh, something that I never expected to happen, but she has wanted to come here. And so now we have her not just here in the area in a assisted living home or whatever, but in our trailer with us. And uh, that necessitated Ethan moving out. Um, and he's now living in a heated room or an insulated room that we've heated in the garage. But she is with us. And so it's just been a blessing that the Lord, that desire that we've had over the years to have her closer has happened and even closer than what I expected. And so it's just a blessing to have her there and uh, now we, however long that we have her with us, um, God knows, but thank the Lord. Plus the fact that I'm especially thankful that my wife is back home. It must be showing because it was commented on this morning, you're smiling more, dear. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, I thank the Lord for this church. Uh, we've been really been blessed. Uh, we've been through some hard times in the last year or so, but uh, I really think that the Lord has really blessed us through these hard times. And we've worked in every group for a long time, all that we probably expected. But we've really been blessed, and uh, we look forward to the past. Amen. Well, let's sing Count Your Blessings, number 563. 563.
Psalm 6 and verse 5 says, For in death there is no remembrance of thee in the grave who will give thee thanks. As long as we're alive, we should be giving thanks. We're going to be spending eternity praising God. But there we won't be able to thank him like we can here. There will be no new working in our life, no difficult circumstances to thank him for, no good circumstances to thank him for, no people being saved, no new children or grandchildren, most any of the things that we can thank him for. So we need to be thanking him now. The psalmist David and Paul instruct us to be thankful. The psalmist says in Psalm 50, verse 14, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay your vows unto the Most High. Colossians, there's one in Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7. We need to abound therein with thanksgiving. And Colossians 3, 15, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Being thankful is not an option, but it is an act of the will for us to obey God and to be thankful. One writer wrote, the sentence which has most influenced my life is this, some persons grumble because God placed thorns among roses. Why not thank God that he placed roses amongst thorns? And he said, and when I first read that, I was a mere lad, but since that day it has occupied a front room of my life and it has given me a more optimistic trend. Have you ever found yourself grumbling and complaining about what others would consider to be a blessing? It's easy to do to be a grumbler. But we need to be people of thanksgiving, thanking God for the things that he's done for us. It's late but you're not having Sunday school class for the adults after this. So I'd like us to take a few moments now and just at least one, but some others, some just brief sentence prayers, thanking God for all that he's done for us. And then we'll close with the last hymn. And speak up so others can hear you. Thank you, Father, for the blessing that you have given to me and privileging me with ministering to this church family. And 
Lord, I just thank you for the times that we've shared together from your word. And the Lord, you've been so good. And Lord, I just thank you for the things and the ways that you have worked in the lives of the church family this year, in difficult times and good times and many blessings. And Lord, we just give you thanks. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing in closing, number 106. It's a song, Praise Him, Praise Him, but I want to change the words again. I'm going to take the liberty of doing that. To thank Him. Thank Him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. So when the, each uh, verse begins with that, let's just say thank Him instead. All right, let's stand as we sing in closing. anyway. There'll be plenty to eat, I'm sure. And so plan to stay and uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving.